I think the other challenge, especially these days, is so the result, right, is the input you get. And someone got ninth, they were expecting the podium. Someone got 15th, they're expecting a top 10. In this day and age, like you've got to put that, as you said, bigger picture into perspective. And there's a lot of, say, ladies, we're losing a lot of them in the final. That can really hurt your confidence. Yep. Miriam Nicole, Gracie Hemstritt, qualified in the top 10, had issues. Okay, now they're not in the final. Like that can weigh on you quite a lot emotionally, you know? And now you've missed out on another race run. Like there's all these dynamics with uh, how much sort of, well, competition there. So you've got to help them with that perspective as well. And I think the ladies category is so exciting to watch. And I could yeah. list off so many notables not in the final. Um, and I don't want to harp on that subject like we need more. I'm just saying like there's so many ladies that are riding incredibly well. That category is awesome. And then you've got to put it in perspective. Yeah, I wasn't in the final, but. You know, yeah, exactly. So there's I was still a bigger picture. Well. I just need to yeah. do my process, like you say, listen to my coach, and then come back firing at the, at the next race. Yeah, and and Gracie's gone back to Canada, and and one of the things I think would help her is is more time against the clock. Is her feeling as though she's got to push against the clock, and what's the clock telling me? What's that feedback? Because her natural ability on the bike is incredible, and I think from when you have a junior career that. You just need to flow down the track and you will, you know, when she was a junior, she was doing so incredibly well all the time. It's it's quite hard to maybe find that edge of like what, you know, how hard do I need to push? What does it need to feel like? And there seems to, it must be hard for them because who do you ride with as an elite female? There's There's not that many of you. It's not a big cohort of people to go with. We've just listed everyone's going to Schlabming and... I've just named loads of lads that are going to Schlabming and the, the girls are going there too, but the numbers are just that much more reduced. And if you've got a freight train of five or six of you, the the elite woman will probably be at the back of that train, let the boys go and then ride. But she's not learning the same. You know, if you've got if you've got Colby and Charlie and Ronan and Dakota and Ollie and Lockie in a train. They're going to be giggling and learning from each other. And one's going to take one line. One's going to take the other line. There's this constant input. But if you had Gracie there and that crew, or you had Nina there and that crew, or Valley there and that crew, she's going to be sort of a bit removed from that. And I'm, you know, who do you put them with? You almost need someone who's technically very proficient, but not as fast. Someone who's going to ride a little bit slower so they can keep up. A junior, but then a junior is often not as refined in their technique. It's like, I wouldn't, you know, there's some riders that are absolutely wild. Imagine Ricky Carmichael on a 125 trying to learn from Ricky Carmichael. You'd be like, his back wheel's left, his back wheel's right. His... <laughs> I'm not, I can't follow that. You know, you need to follow someone who's got like a nice repeatable technique. And and that's something that's been going through my head as well. Like how how do we, we give that um, next step? Like how do we bring on the riders and they can learn from each other? And maybe it's collaboration, you know, getting these girls together a bit more and putting them together and say, hey, let's, you know, let's put the co competitive side apart. We can, everyone can learn here. We can all get better in this environment together. Yeah, that's super interesting. Have you given it much more thought on structured skill development versus natural skill development from riding your bike, say in the group you just spoke about, versus say some structure like in other sports, there's things like drills and doing one corner over and over. And I've heard Andy Cole does this front brake drill that him and Peckle came up with. And that's super interesting because other sports have refined skill acquisition. Yeah. But downhill, you get it from riding your bike a lot and it's a very reactive sport. Um, and some other sports are actually reactive when you play it, but you end up, say tennis, you would argue is reactive and you're not thinking about technique when you play a match. You shouldn't be. You're always, dri you're always and drilling And downhill, stuff. you definitely yeah. shouldn't be thinking, but you're doing drills and and like the Aussies used to do the cutty turns and that's why they were yeah. so incredible in turns and balance. So have you given that much more thought on like skill acquisition on a downhill bike? Oh, and for like sure. How Absolutely. to maybe re like yeah. change the thinking on that? Yeah, it's it, it really has been a big part of my sort of recent uh, thoughts and I've been doing a, a fair bit of reading up about it and, and trying to put it into practice because it's a I think it's it's a big gap where we're really, you know, we're, we're giving people a lot of structure in the gym and on their on their bike. And and then uh, for a lot of people, just sending them off to ride the downhill bike, go and have fun with your friends. 
and and the attitude is often the way to get faster on a downhill bike is just to go faster and and that is a a huge risk versus reward and i don't think it has to be that way if you if you look at the technical input of um on a motocross track for example they're riding corners they're riding off the brakes they're standing up only no back brake all of these different things to try and become smooth and and refine a technique and i don't think downhillers are are great at refining a technique they're not thinking consciously about what they're doing and i'm i'm trying to gather more and more information to to almost sell the idea of structuring things a little bit more and and one of those things is variation there's a lot of evidence to show that variation in practice actually is a really good thing to improve skill so if you're riding one track all day long and you're on the same line all day long it it might help you on that day but doesn't necessarily translate to an improvement in skills development and I wonder if there's a way that tracks, it's something that I want to talk to Athi about down in Dovey. I think there's some things that we could do on a, on a track to offer multiple lines through the same corner and encourage that approach so that you come into the trees and there are four lines. And yes, there's always going to be a faster line, but who cares? We're practicing. You don't need yes. to take the faster line. You know, you can take a, a, a setup line. You can take an off camber line. You can take a super tight line where you've got to, you know, you haven't got as much grip and you've got to push that inside bar a lot more. What, you know, where are you dropping the outside pedal versus keeping the pedals parallel? All of these things that are affecting your rounded approach. So when you turn up at a track, you can reflect and go, oh, I know how to ride this. I know instinctively how to ride this because I've ridden this turn a million times. But if you've only ridden that tur- that one turn on one track, you haven't got a broad, you know, a broad scope. It's like different terrain, you know, like a car being driven over gravel or tarmac or whatever, or a tennis player on different surfaces. They, they want to build up this broad understanding. And yes, they might be better on one over another, but I do think there's huge areas to improve upon. And the days when a downhiller might say, well, you can't coach me because you're not as fast as me. You know, you look at a, a weightlifting coach or a tennis coach or a football coach, you know, Alex Ferguson wasn't the best player in the world, but he's by far the best coach that's ever coached in the game. So you can just knock that that um, that attitude into touch pretty quickly. And I think that also as the age gap in, as the age gap gets bigger, it's almost a bit easier. You know, if you're a young guy coming in in your early 20s and you want to say, hey, I've got some real things that are going to help you here. Sometimes someone who's younger or the same age, who's already got success might go oh i'm not sure i'm going to listen to that and i think that's something they need to reflect on because that's a weakness from the rider's point of view you know someone might be coming in with some really interesting stuff here and they, they've got to they'll have to sell it and i'm in the same position but because my age gap maybe is now growing from some of these riders i'm like well you, you wouldn't expect me to keep up with you you know if i if i'm keeping up with you i should probably be racing myself so you can immediately sort of say well let's try this i can feed back to you in a slightly different way and there's, there's lots to be gained and, and I've had lots of ideas and I've got lots of things that I'm looking forward to developing as the season goes on and in, in years to come for sure. Yeah, I love that. That was fascinating hearing that because I think about it as well. These things called block practice. So if there's a glaring issue, you maybe do drills and block practice or, okay, we've noticed you're struggling with your braking, then we can work on that. And then variation yeah. is skill acquisition. So I love that. Like different corners makes total sense you get to a race, then you might be able to gauge better if that inside line versus that outside line go. of a race, which one's quicker without needing Alan there with mm. a stopwatch. Yeah. Because you do, unfortunately, need to give the riders the tools um, and then how, you know, and help them make their better decisions. And maybe they'll need you less, but then your job's done. You know, you've done a great Completely. job. Yeah. And, and yeah. You've, you've, hit on, you've hit on a fantastic point there is you turn up at a, say you turn up at a bike park and there's a really good downhill track and you're there for the weekend. So you ride that same track eight times in on day one. Then you ride the same track again day two. You've just ridden exactly the same lines all the time. If, if that was your approach to practicing downhill, you then come to a new venue in Poland. You have no idea where you're going. You're not capable of adapting to different lines very well. You don't know what to do. It's a massive change. And actually, the challenge isn't going to be riding down the hill. The challenge is going to be, how do I find the best route down this hill? So you're going to teach people the best way to find the route down the hill with with variation in practice. 
So it, it, it really is something that I think people uh, should consider for themselves. Definitely.